Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 3, Lesson 2, Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine whether relations are functions and evaluate functions in function notation for given values. Let's learn functions. A function is a relationship between the input and the output. In a function, there's exactly one output for each input. The graph of a function is the graph of the equation y equals f of x. The relation shown is a function because each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element in the range. If we look at our mapping that they gave us, negative six only goes to one number. Negative three only goes to five. One only goes to zero. Four only goes to negative two. This is a function because each thing in the domain only goes to one thing in the range. Think about it like a vending machine. If you push the button for Sprite, and if the vending machine is working properly, then a Sprite comes out. If you push the button again, after you put in more money, of course, and root beer comes out, you would say that it's not a functioning vending machine because you got different things each time. If it's functioning, then only one thing will come out after you push the button. So a function works the same way. Only one thing comes out. If our mapping or coordinates or table was showing that the domain is going to more than one thing, this would no longer be a function because I pushed that button and two different things could possibly come out. You can also use what's called the vertical line test to see if a graph represents a function. Our key concept here then is the vertical line test. If it's a function, it passes the vertical line test, which means that vertical lines intersect the graph no more than once. So if I draw a bunch of vertical lines, or if I just use the grid, okay, nowhere on this graph, if I draw a vertical line, it only crosses one time. If it crosses more than once, it fails the vertical line test. So if I look at this one here, there's a bunch of times where it crossed twice. So that is not good. That is not a function. Okay. Functions only cross once, not functions will cross more than once. If you ever come across the place, even once where it crosses more than once, then it is not a function. So like if you had a line that looked like this, most places it's only crossing once. However, there is a place where it crosses more than once. So this would not be a function. Example one. Identify functions. Determine whether each relation is a function. Explain. So in A, if we want it to be a function, each thing in the domain has to go to only one thing in the range. So this one went to one, we're good. Negative two only goes to three, we're good. Positive two only goes to three, we're good again. It's okay that two numbers go to the same thing, right? You can have more than one button on a vending machine for Sprite. And the last one, only goes to six. So this is a function because for each element of the domain, there's only one element that it goes to in the range. So this represents a function. This is a function. B, we're given a table this time. We're checking the domain to see if it goes to only one thing. Four tables, we're just checking. Does two only go to three? So far, yes. Does six only go to five? Does eight only go to five? Here I see a two again. Notice I already had it. The first time I pushed the button, it went to three. The second time I pushed the button, does it go to three? This time it went to negative three. It's something different. So that is not a function because the element two, that number in the domain, goes to both three and negative three in the range. So this is not a function. If you're looking at a tables, really all you have to do is look at your domain, find any that show up more than once, and then check to see if they go to the same thing each time. If they don't, it's not a function. C, this time we're given some coordinates. Just like the table, we're gonna look at our X values, our domain, and if we find any duplicates, so four shows up there and four shows up there, do they go to the same thing? This one went to seven. So if I push the button again, it should go to seven. Nope, that went to 13. So because four went to seven and 13, two different things, 
This is not a function. Check your understanding. Look through these three choices and determine which of the relations are functions. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For this one, if we check number one, eight only goes to six, that's fine. Five also goes to six, that's fine. Three goes to one, two only goes to five. So one is good. Each thing in the domain only has one arrow coming from it. So it only goes to one thing. In the domain for number two, I have a zero there and a zero there. Those ones are the same, so I have to check, do they go to the same thing? No, not two. Number three, looking for duplicates, two, four, eight, four again. So four went to seven and 13. That is not a function. It went to two different things. So only number one is a function. Example two, analyze data. Our real context here is long jump. Five schools are competing in the long jump portion of a track meet. The distances of the players with the best jump on each team are as follows. Team one, 20.6 feet. Team two, 21.5 feet. Team three, 20.9 feet. Team four, 19.4 feet. And team five, 20.2 feet. Part A, first let's make a table. So here they paired team one with their best jump of 20.6. So team two was 21.5, then 20.9, 19.4, and 20.2. So first we just paired the team with how far they jumped. Next, let's determine the domain and the range. So the domains are your input. They are your independent variables or your X values. So in this situation, the domain is going to be the team. So what teams do we have? We have one, two, three, four, and five. If you're having trouble figuring out, think about if someone else joined, what would be the first thing that you would do? You would tell them that they're team six or team seven. Those are your domain values as you add more X's or more things. Then the range is what each of those domains did. So team one jumped 20.6. Team two jumped 21.5. So those values are our range. So is this a function? Yes, it's a function because each team only had one number coming from it. They chose their best jumper. If each team was allowed to choose more than one jumper, then this would no longer be a function because each team number would have different values that it could go to. Check your understanding, read through the situation and determine the domain and range of the relation and determine if it's a function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So reading through this, we have the people and their height. So people are, if you added new things, you would first ask their name, that's your domain. The range then would be, how tall are they? We have to know the person before we can figure out how tall. So domain is the people, range is the height. So domain, here we have our people as a domain and the range is their heights, okay? Notice 66 showed up in the range twice, but we only write it once. So remember back in the last section, we only need to write things once. If they show up more than once, be lazy, just write it once. C is our correct domain and range. Is this a function? If you're not sure, ask yourself, can the person have more than one height? As they grow older, they might be growing taller. However, at one time, they can only have one height. So yes, this would be a function. Each person can only have one height at a time. Example three, equations as functions. Determine whether 6x plus 2y equals 14 is a function. Explain. So here we're given a graph. When we see graphs, we should just use the vertical line test. So if we draw some vertical lines, is there ever a place where the vertical line would go through more than once? Each time the vertical lines pass through no more than one point at a time. So this is a function. It represents a function. So yes. Check your understanding. Read through the following sentences and decide if those described represent functions. Check yes or no in each row. Pause the video now and complete the check.
check your answers. If the relation passes the vertical line test, yes, that's a function. If an element in the domain is paired with only two, we don't want two, we want one. So no, that is not a function if it's paired with two. A vertical line passes through more than one point. Nope, we can only have one thing. The domain represents each student in class while the range represents the age. So students and ages. Can a student have more than one age at the same time? They cannot, so each thing can only go to one number. Yes, that is a function. The domain represents the number of a day in May, while the range represents the high temperature for that day. You may think that this is a yes, but it's actually a no because of the way it's worded. So they're just telling you to pick a number for the day in May. So let's say five. Okay, the high temperature that day might be 100 degrees, but May 5 next year might be 92 degrees. So because they don't specify like the number of a day in May for a year, we have to think about all the things that could happen. So this is actually a no. And the equations of the form y equals x squared plus b, you're going to get a graph that looks like this. That would be yes. Let's learn function values. Equations that are functions can be written in a form called function notation. Function notation is just a way of writing an equation so that y equals f of x. And this part here just means function and it's pronounced f of x. So if you see something written like that, like g with the same thing, this is g of x. Or maybe you would see something like this, h parentheses t. This would be h of t. What this means is that the number inside is the domain, and then what it equals, what you get as your answer, is the range. So domain and range. So this number is what you're going to put in. This number is what you get out, domain and range. Let's look at how this works. So example four, find function values. For f of x equals negative 2x plus 9, find each value. So here we want f of 4 and then plus 3. So once we figure out what f of 4 is, we'll add 3. So our first step is going to be to take this number and substitute it in where the x was. So I'm going to plug 4 in for x. After that, I'm going to just calculate it out following order of operations. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Still in the parentheses, I need to add. So negative 8 plus 9 is 1. Now the parentheses are gone. I can add that 3 that was at the end. 1 plus 3 is 4. B, same function, but this time we want to do f of 5 minus f of 1. Here, we're going to substitute things in twice. First, we're going to plug in 5 in the first time. We can go through and calculate... We can go through and calculate that out, or we can set it up. We want one in for the second one. If it helps you to do this whole part first and then do this whole part, go for it. So just like before, I'm going to multiply it out and get negative 10. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Now I have to do the second part. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 9 gives me 7, and we're still subtracting it. So finally, negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. So I just substituted 5 in, and then I substituted 1 in, and did what it said. Subtract it. Check your understanding. For f of x equals negative 3x plus 2, find each value. So do what it says. Take the value, plug it in, figure out what the range is of what you get out. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. For the first one, if you plug in negative 4, you should have got 14. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. If you plug in 5, you end up with negative 13, but then adding 8 after that, you get negative 5. If we plug in 3, we end up with negative 7. And then if we subtract where we plugged in 6, we end up subtracting negative 16. So negative 7 minus negative 16 ends up being positive 9. Example 5, evaluate functions. For h of x equals negative 6x squared plus 18x plus 36, find each value. 
So here we just have a more complicated equation, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take what it tells us to plug it in, and we're going to plug it in for what was there originally. So we got to plug in 2 every time there's an x. Now we just follow order of operations and multiply out. So exponent first would give me 4, then times negative 6 is negative 24, 18 times 2 is 36, and then that plus 36 at the end. Adding them all together, I end up with 48. Same thing goes in part B. We're going to solve h of 4 first, then subtract h of 1. So for h of 4, we would plug in 4. For h of 1, we would plug in 1. Again, we're plugging it in for x. Then simplifying it out, we end up with negative 96 and then 72 for the first group and negative 6 plus 18 for the second group. Adding each part together, in the first group we have 12, in the second we have 48, so 12 minus 48 is negative 36. Part C, again, just another example of the same thing. So we're going to do the same thing, just plug in 5. Once we get in our final answer, we'll subtract 7 and then be done. All right, oops, this should say h. We're doing function h. So h of 5 minus 7. Let's plug in 5. Then calculate it out. So negative 150 plus 90, and then that plus 36 at the end. All that together is negative 24. And then subtract 7, we would end up at negative 31. Check your understanding. Determine the value of each of these for g of x. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. g of 2 is negative 18. g of 5 plus 12 is 12. g of 8 minus 18 is 36. g of negative 3 minus g of 4 is 42. Example 6. Interpret function values. Our real-world context is employment. Mason works at the movie theater after school. The function g of x equals 9.25x represents the amount of money he makes before taxes for each hour that he works. Evaluate and interpret the function for each value. So first, g of 8 means we're going to plug in 8 for x. What this means is that if Mason works for 8 hours, so x is the hours, he works for 8 of them, we get out 74. So he would make $74. What we plugged in, domain, what we got out, range. So g of 14 works the same way. If he works for 14 hours, we would plug in 14 for x and get out 129.5. So he would make $129.50. Using the same logic, pause the video. What does 27.5 stand for? You should have said, if you plug in 27.5, you get out 254.375. So if he works for 27.5 hours, he's going to make $254, and we would have to round that up, so 38 cents. Check your understanding. Read through the situation. And part A, find h of 3.25. And then part B, what does it mean in the context of this problem? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So first, plugging in 3.25 into our function where x is, we get 1,950. What does it mean in context? After we plug in 3.25, so after 3.25 hours, the amount of water in the pool will be 1950, which is in gallons.